It is good to welcome you all. And let me say, what we are doing today, it is not something different from what we have been doing. But now, we will have a task of strengthening data-driven journalism in the campaign against corruption and demand for accountability in a local language. The position mentioned the media and it says in section 22 of the 1999 constitution that the press, radio and television and indeed all agents of mass media should at all times uphold, and it's a, at all times, uphold the responsibility of the government to the people. Our saving grace now in this age is to go to a deeper reporting of happening and therefore towards to investigative journalism. Whatever activity that you are involved in, in which you have abused your power, your influence, for your own private gain, you are said to be corrupt. So I'm sure you will be able to identify when you see corruption by that definition. Transparency International agreed. The moment you said you are doing investigation, you are looking for corruption. When you pick a topic, the first thing that you should ask yourself, is there corruption in it? If there is no corruption, don't waste your time. When we are doing investigation, you have to go in depth. Beyond what you are seeing, you have to ask yourself, you have to refuse to believe to most of the things you see. And you have to narrow, narrow to one issue. Don't take it wide. If you report something and someone can just find a small loophole, even if it's just one error, the entire report or research can be discredited between the actual and the final budget. Was there any variance? It tells us how much. And then if there's a, if there's a column next, you see, you see budget performance. But when you are facing me with hard evidence, and I know that this guy got me, what will I be doing? I'll just go back. Please, can you, can you please off your mic? Well, because they were, they were faced with hard evidence. At every point when we evaluate, what we do is to ensure that what are the challenges that they are facing? How do we overcome them? What are the positives? What are the negatives? The negatives, we don't throw them away. We learn what it is that we need to do to make it better. Facts must be what? Sacrosan and building block of story that will bear the rudiment of acceptability, fairness, and responsibility. A journalist should not identify either by name, picture, or interview children under the age of 16 who are involved in cases concerning sexual offense, crime, rituals, witchcraft, as either victim or witnesses or defendant. Do you know what it is that, as they're coming out and as a journalist, they are doing him like this. It's that one that we give to us. Because they will give and they will go and report again that they gave you to us. So you, you think about losing your integrity and the integrity of your media outfit. You have to ensure that you get all the sides of the story, you know, to make it balanced. We need to make our stories believable. We need to make our reports believable. You know, if it's wishy-washy, no, we won't get any result. Get your fat before you go out. If you are out of fat on someone, the person, it will be very difficult for that person to chase you. Because anything that happened to you at that time, people will suspect, they will not even suspect, they will point the finger at him that is the one that did this. In every facet of life and also uh, governance, whether public or private, you will see that there is corruption. The moral corruption is part of the social corruptions. Uh, so please uh, look at all these issues. Look at each and every one of them.
enriched bodily, mentally, and equally spiritually. And I pray that um, all that we've learned here, all the new knowledge exposed to us, we shall put all of them into use when we get back. That will help to make our nation a better place.